In this video, we're going to look at the various Raspberry Pi images available from SDR Play and discuss how to download them, install them, and use them. Three separate images are available. V0.6 is the oldest image and includes a variety of software packages that work with the RSP. It supports the RSP1, the 1A, the RSP2 and 2 Pro, and the RSP Duo in single tuner mode only. More recently, we've provided an image for V0.7, which adds support for the RSP Duo in master slave mode and also the RSPDX, although that does not include the HDR mode. We will constantly be adding additional software as the various packages are updated to be compatible with the new API. And then thirdly, we have V0.1 of the headless server. And this is designed such that at boot time, it will automatically start running a server, which you can connect to via other software, be it SDR Uno in EXTIO mode, or perhaps via Cubic SDR. And that is designed for remote usage, perhaps out on the antenna, allowing you to access the RSP functions remotely. The first thing we need to do is download the necessary software. So if we go to sdrplay.com to the downloads page, we then select the Raspberry Pi tab and then the Raspberry Pi images selection. This will bring out a description of the various images that are available. We're going to concentrate on V0.7 images. V.7 is the first release of the image that will support both the RSPDX and the RSP Duo in master slave mode. In addition to the basic image which includes software, there is also a stripped down headless server version. And this allows you to automatically start up a server when the Pi is booted up. And there are a choice of four different servers. RSP server 16 bit is the one you would normally use in extended mode with for use with uh, SDR Uno. Uh, there's also an RTL server available and finally the SOAPY server which is a great server for use with uh, Cubic SDR. So the first thing you want to do is select which image you want to download. And for example if I wanted to download the full uh, V0.7 image I would click here and the download is, is underway. Meanwhile, uh, we need one other piece of software which will enable us to take that image and flash it to an SD card that in turn we will put into the Pi and boot from that. And uh, there is some software called Balina Etcher which works very nicely and is available for both Mac OS and Linux and Windows. Uh, in my case, I'm using Mac OS here, so I would simply download the image like this. So now the next step is to wait until the software is downloaded and uh, I'll pause the uh, video here and come back and show you the next step. I've now completed downloading both the Raspberry Pi image and also the uh, Bellina Etcher image. So the next step would be to go to the downloads uh, folder and uh, open up the uh, disk image file for Bellina Etcher and it's very straightforward to uh, install. You just simply have to drag the, uh, the icon from the installer into your applications folder. So once you've completed that, uh, we can go to applications. We can open up uh, Bellina Etcher. Here it is. Very simple interface to use this. I don't know where the uh, interface is. It's so simple I can't even see it. <laughs> Here it is. So the first thing we do is we want to select the image we want to burn to the SD card. So we click on that and uh, here we see the Raspberry Pi V0.7 image that we downloaded previously. We open up that. Next we select the target and uh, in this case this would be the um, generic mass storage device. This is my SD card that's been plugged in. We then click continue and then we click on flash and it will then uh, take some time to write the image to uh, to the card. Uh, let's see if... Uh, and uh, when it's completed writing the image it will then go through a verify step 
and then eventually it will come back and tell you that the copy has been complete. Spolina Etcher has finished writing to the SD card. Uh, at least on the Mac it's already been unmounted so you can just simply unplug the uh, SD card, take it over to your Raspberry Pi, plug it in and boot the Pi. However, if we want to use the headless server version, we want to make a few more minor changes before we put it into the Pi to determine which type of server we want to use on PowerUp. So to bring the, uh, the image back up on the desktop, you can either use Disk Utility or you can simply unplug it and plug it back in. And you should see a device called Boot will appear. If we open this up, we can look at the contents of the file and somewhere in here you will see one of the server files which will determine which particular server will be started by default when you boot the Raspberry Pi. In this case it's been set up to use Soapy Server. I believe by default the image you download from sdrplay.com will uh, go to the 16-bit uh, TCP server. Uh, what I did when I first set this up, and this, you may find something similar already included on images you download in the future, is I created another directory called Other Servers, and I created files for all four different types of server. And so, depending on which one you want to uh, be started when you boot the Pi, you take that server file and put it into the root directory, and you can take the other folder and, and put it away so for example, if I wanted to boot into the 16-bit RSP server, I just drag this file out here. And now you see it shows up on its own. Um, if those f server files are not included uh, when you download the image, it's simple enough to create them yourself. Uh, on the Mac, you could use a, a text editor. If you're using uh, Windows, you could use Notepad. And I will just demonstrate that very briefly. Uh, text edit and uh, we'll do new and so here we have an untitled file now what we need to do is save this so file save we don't have to put anything within the file and we'll call this server file the actual name you use needs to match the four names that are showed on the uh, website and you'll see that here we have a server file if we get the information and this is a key thing to notice. You see name and extension, serverfile.rtf. You have to remove the extension for this to work correctly. So we remove the extension. We get the warning, but we're going to remove it anyway. So now here we have a, a uh, empty file that's named after the server we want. And as I mentioned, the, the actual name needs to match one of the four servers that are available. So, for example, um, let's say RTL server. I could just rename this and just call it RTL server. And that would give me the RTL server file. And then all you have to do is duplicate this file and, and rename each duplicate until you have all four options there. So RSP server 8-bit, RTL server, SOAPY server, and RSP server 16-bit. So uh, once you've got those, take whichever one you want to use out of this other folder. And we're going to go back to SOAPY server, and take it out of the other servers folder. And now when I, if I uh, take this file or take this, this uh, SD card over to my Pi and boot it, it will boot into SOAPY server mode. So the thing you have to do is uh, take the uh, device, eject it, and now you can simply remove it, take it over to the Pi and boot it up. Card and plugged it in to my Raspberry Pi and uh, booted it up. So if I now start Cubic SDR, I have no RSPs plugged in locally, but you see immediately it has detected the RSP2 that is plugged into the Raspberry Pi uh, elsewhere on my local network. And that's one of the really nice things about using the uh, SOAPY remote option. You don't need to know what the uh, uh, IP address is or anything else like that. Uh, if you use any of the other server options, one thing you will need to do is figure out what the IP address is. 
And normally the way that's accomplished is by going into your router settings and so that you can see which devices have been connected to your router and you look down there until you see Raspberry Pi and uh, from that point you can read its IP address. So I'm going to cancel out of Cubic and uh, what I'm going to do next is open up uh, all these, both these images you can access using uh, SSH. So uh, uh, that's my local deal. Let's go for a new remote connection. So I put in uh, 192.168.1.160, which is the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Uh, by default, the username is Pi. And so if I do a connect, I should get a screen. It's asking for the password, which again, by default is Raspberry. So I can type that in. And uh, now I'm logged into the uh, Raspberry Pi remotely. Uh, one of the things you want to do, uh, the, there's a little prompt here about setting country and locale and all that other stuff, but uh, this uh, config utility is very useful uh, for a couple of other things. So let me open this up and, uh, okay, sorry, sudo config. And it opens up this little uh, graphical interface here and uh, of course, you can change your user password. Uh, you can play with your network settings. Uh, one thing that is really useful is, uh, let's see, I forget which one it is. Let's try advanced options, although I think it may not be. Here, there we go. Uh, number one, expand file system. Um, what happens is the, the images were sized, in particular the headless server, to be as small as possible so it doesn't take too long to download and, uh, and you can put it on just about any SD card. The, uh, the full version with the application software is a little bit bigger. But uh, chances are that you're probably putting this onto a card that's considerably bigger in capacity than what's uh, needed to put that image. But if you look at the image on the Pi, you'll find that it, it shows as being full. So this command here, expand the file system, means that all of your SD card storage is available. So as you go in and make further modifications to the configuration of your Pi, you have room to do that. So that's a very important um, option to select uh, going forward. Beyond that, it's pretty straightforward. There, there is not a lot you can do with the um, headless server is designed that it will boot into that server mode and, and there's very little else going on. Uh, perhaps uh, I'll do another one in just a second. I'll show you what it looks like if you uh, download the full image with the software. Um, I want to take a look at that one. Uh, the headless server image in the Pi with the, uh, the full image and uh, as I showed before I was able to log in using a new remote connection but look at this there's some error message here and uh, Basically what this is telling me is that uh, the known host file has changed, which it would do because I changed image files. And the key here is it shows you a file that needs to be modified, so I can open that up in, in uh, File Manager or a Finder in, Windows, in uh, Mac Speak, and I can take this and I can delete this file, file here. Okay, so then I can try again and do uh, Connect. Uh, can I, are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And it asks for the password again, which again is Raspberry by default. And uh, now we're into the new image. So what we can do at this point is do a sudo raspberry pi config again. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, there are a number of things here, but what I wanted to show you uh, primarily at this point is maybe it's advanced settings, I can never remember. Um, and what I'm looking for at this point is uh, the ability to turn on a VNC server. Let's have a look here. Uh, there it is, VNC. And one of the things that um, led me to not using the Pi as, as much as I might otherwise do was the fact that I always had to scurry around and find an HDMI monitor I could plug in and uh, also find um, 
a keyboard and a mouse to hook it up. So what I've done now is I have turned on the uh, VNC server and with a bit of luck if I do that I can use some software called Real VNC. Let's see if I can find that in my applications folder. If you don't have it it's again a free download. Um, I don't know why I'm not seeing it here. I've got, oh, maybe it's VNC viewer, maybe that's the one. And uh, okay, here is my uh, Pi. And uh, I'm going to continue. And uh, now what we're looking at is the actual screen that we would see on the Pi if we had a monitor hooked up to it. Um, it's a security risk, yeah, but I like to live on the edge. And so let's go to uh, Easy Play, which is the uh, menu uh, system. And I suspect one thing I might want to do at some point is play with the uh, uh, screen resolution. But what this allows me to do is sit here and remotely go in and I can see the various um, inf uh, software and uh, other features that are available on the Raspberry Pi. Now, as I mentioned, the chances are uh, we are progressively updating uh, the necessary uh, software to work with the new API. So by the time by the time you download a limit uh, an image, you may find you have a lot more software available to you than is shown here. So uh, that's it for getting up and running with the uh, Raspberry Pi using the V0.7 image. Uh, go in and play with it and have some fun.